be a replacement for the Neptune ordered shortly. And if I got myself to Townsville, did a couple of years on Neptunes, I'd be there for the pickup of the P3C. Everything went hummingly. I went to Townsville, did you know, nearly three years on P3s, on P2s, I should say. Uh, they ordered the P3. My crew was the first to be going to go to Edinburgh and uh, convert to P3B, then go and pick up the new, brand new, shining P3Cs. And then DPO said, no, 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 go to instructor's course instead and fly CD4s. So, not that I ever regretted that. Um, I spent two years at Point Cook on CD4s. And then things just happened because of events beyond your control. I looked like being there for quite some time. They were short on instructors. They were posting people out, short of experienced instructors. They were posting people out after 12 months back to the squadron, which wasn't wasn't good for anyone, but they were short on squadron instructors. Um, and um, and then the Air Force bought 707s um, over Christmas. And as a result of uh, that, uh, the guy from flying 748s at uh, the train flight commander of 34 squadron got sent to 707s. The guy, they needed a 748 QFI at 34 immediately, so the guy from SAN got sent up there. So after Christmas stand down, I got sent to SAN, which I thought, where did that ever appear on a posting preference? But anyway, it, it turned out to be quite a cushy job flying drag masters around Australia. Um, and then uh, again, stuff happened 18 months later and uh, they needed a 7-8 QFI at 34 squadron again, so off I went. Um, by now, so I was promoted shortly thereafter. Uh, I was given the acting rank and then was promoted shortly thereafter and um, I knew this, all this fun is coming to an end. So my kids had been in schools in three states now, so I thought time to, so I amplified for to stay, I'd take any crappy squadron leader's job in, in defence knowing there's a gazillion there. So they posted me to 2FTS and then Piers. And I said, uh, no, I'm, I'm out of here. And uh, there was a job going in CASA. So I went to CASA for six years. And then fortunately in 1989, the world ran out of 22-year-olds um, with 10,000 hours. They aged the age limit. Fancy out there were age limits back then uh, in uh, the airlines. And I, after... <laughs> After going to TAA just in time for the pilots dispute and apparently resigning, um, I'd managed to scuttle into Qantas and stayed there for the next 20 years and uh, had a wonderful time. Uh, so, um, so I had a blessed career I, and, and started off with, um, I mean, I don't think anyone really wants to go to a war, but in retrospect, it's always, uh, something that you know you've tested yourself against and you can always say, well, when, even today as we speak, you know, things going on in Ukraine, I have some, even though things have moved on, but I have some feeling for what what that's all like. Uh, yeah. It's, um, and helicopters were fun. They were just fun. Quality. No, I didn't, because, well, see, the only, and there were several of my vintage or, only just slightly seen it, my, my vintage did, because there weren't many decent commercial helicopter jobs going except working for ESO. Yeah. And um, most of the others were living in the bush or, and they were just starting to get TV stations going. But, uh, but there were several of our, of my contemporaries wound up down at ESO. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that was, I, I'm not sure that, well, most of them adapted to that quite well. There were a couple who insisted on having as much fun in SA as they had in the Air Force, and that wasn't, that was frowned upon, but uh, anyway, yeah. that's, that's the way it goes. Yeah. Look, I, I think it was, uh, for this short period of time that I was there, it was, uh, they were the right people at the right time in the right place. Um, I think uh, there was, at times, the boggies would be appalled by the, the leadership. Um, but, um, you know, that's boggies being boggies. Uh, you didn't, it was impossible for a 20 year old to put themselves in, in the shoes of, well, 
Peter Coy, for example, at 36 with a family and all the rest of it. I don't know how that worked. Um, but I think it was just, it was a very, prof I think a very professional outfit. We did some stupid things. I did, personally did some really stupid and dangerous things uh, that I shouldn't have done, as a couple of guys will attest. But generally speaking, we, we got the job done very, very well. So uh, quite proud of having been there. Yeah.